Okay, when we're stacking larger structures, this is when the full comprehensive set of rules comes into play. I'm going to deal on this page with some trichords and tetrachords, or three note chords, uh, sometimes triads, uh, sometimes not necessarily ones that have names, and then tetrachords, or four note chords. And I put some very strange configurations down here. Most of these are going to be a little bit harder, stranger, odder, and more peculiar than what you typically will encounter, barring these ones here. Um, but if we understand the principles, it doesn't matter what the notes are that we're stacking accidentals to, uh, the procedure is what we want to try to follow. So, these ones are very conjunct, or very close to each other, and some of them I spread out considerably farther. Let's start with this first one here. Let's say we're going to add sharps across the board on all of these. Again, the accidental type are interchangeable, so it's really irrelevant which ones we're using. I'm just going to use sharps for the sake of simplicity, I guess. So whenever we're stacking accidentals, if we have to stack accidentals on every one of these notes, obviously stacking less than that would make this, this whole process a bit simpler. But if we had to stack them on everything, you always start by adding the accidental to the top. Top note. Topmost note. Um, and trying to keep it in alignment with the note in question, too, with the note head itself. Now, after this, the next thing we want to try to seek is to figure out, do we have any notes below this uppermost note that is an octave? That's our priority. If we do have it an octave, which we don't, but if we had a C below, we would want to align that one immediately and then proceed downward, continuing to do the same thing. Seeking preferences of octaves, because that makes it much easier to read these things when we're sight reading. Uh, we don't have one here, so the next checkpoint is, do we have the interval of a seventh below the top note? Again, no. If we did, we would apply the accidental in direct alignment with that seventh, if at all possible. Um, since we don't have anything larger than an octave, we're going to go on to the, if I have a sixth or less. <clears throat> if you do, we have this choice right here. What we want to try to do is find the largest uh, interval that is a sixth. Uh, so a sixth is above a fifth, a fifth would have priority over a fourth, a fourth over a third, and so on. Uh, the fifth is the lowest note we have. So we're going to put the accidental onto the fifth below the uppermost note. But it has to, of course, offset to the left, as per uh, an earlier section of the video. Like so. We have nothing else beneath, so we have to start all over again from the top. The only other note we have left is the A, so we have to offset that one to the left. I apologize for my poor writing. But this organization is how to apply the accidentals. Regardless of whether they're sharps, flats, naturals, or any combination of these, this is the priority order that you should apply to these notes if all of them required an accidental. Anything else is not accurate, it's not correct, it's not recognizably correct. Uh, you could do whatever you want, but if you submit these to people who do uh, know how to read music, or are aware uh, with the principles of music, it will be odd to them, it will look strange. Much like, much like misspelling words regularly. Uh, if you're texting your friend, that might be fine, but if you're writing an important letter, it's, it's probably not preferred. So this is the way we want to do this. Let's walk through the same procedure with this next chord here. Again, always start at the topmost note. And then after that, we don't have anything that's either an octave or a seventh, or greater than an octave. So what we need to do next is to figure out, well, what's the next largest interval that I have that's smaller than a seventh? Well, in this case, it's the A, a fifth below the E. So I apply the accidental to that note, but it has to be offset to the left. Uh, the next note's in between those, so I have to start back over at the top and repeat my procedure over again. If I had another note down here, well, let's do that one real quick. Let's say I had a four-note group, so this mirrors this one. Let's say we had a four-note group like that. Uh, maybe an F-sharp major seven, something like this. And we had to apply a sharp to everything. Again, we start at the top. What we seek below the topmost note is an octave. Don't have one. Do we have a seventh? Yes, we do. We can and should align those two in direct alignment with each other. After that, there's nothing else beneath. We could check down. What we would want to do is to check down further for another octave or a seventh or uh, something greater, but there is nothing. So we have to start back over again. The next highest or uppermost note is the C. We'll apply the sharp there, just offset to the left, of course. And then we cannot cram in the sharp for the A sharp here, it's not possible. So again, offset to the left. And this is the way 
these accidentals should be placed for a structure compact like that. Let's continue over. Uh, so again, looking at all those rules, which are somewhat comprehensive, um, having them embedded in the video either beneath, uh, which is where I might place it, or hopefully it's, maybe it's a little rolling. I'm not sure how I'm going to add it in there, but I'm going to give it to you. Uh, research or reference the rules when we're looking at these things here. So we'll start at the topmost note, and then from there we want to seek an octave. Hey, we have one. So we want to place the accidental on that note. There's nothing else an octave or a seventh that, that falls. We do have something smaller which should offset to the left, but let's start this whole procedure over again. Actually, we would be in pretty good shape almost either way. But we're going to go to the next uppermost note, since there's nothing greater than an octave or a seventh, or even an octave or a seventh. Apply the sharp to the B, or the accidental in question, and then we want to apply to the D, the next one. The problem is it's not a seventh or greater below B, so it has to offset to the left as well. If it was greater, we could align it, but we didn't have anything like that. Okay, moving over to the next one, we always start at the top. I think I'll mix it up a little bit. Let's put flats on these ones. Uh, going below, we do have an interval greater than an octave, but the priority order is to seek an octave. When we don't have an octave below the G. The next priority pitch in question is an A. It's a seventh. So we do need to align the seventh. After that, there's nothing a seventh or greater. So we can start back at the top again with the C, offset to the left. I want to align the E next. It's not a seventh or an octave, so it has to go back over again and offset to the left. This is the best we can align this. And then the next one, start at the top, go with flats again. Uh, we're going to seek uh, an octave. We don't have an E beneath the E, um, so we want to seek for a seventh. Well, we don't have that pitch either, that would be an F. So what we want to do next in order is to seek an interval greater than an octave. And you want to do this in, uh, in order as well. We seek for a ninth next, if not that, then a tenth, if not that, then an eleventh, and so on. So start at the next interval nearest an octave. We do have a ninth, so we're going to directly align those. We have nothing else left, so we move over to the left, apply the accidental in question, and there we go. This one here, let's go to naturals this time. I'll start at the top as always. Uh, we seek an octave. We have an octave. We align the octave. Go back to the top. C is the next note in question. Offset to the left. Can't cram the interval of, we can't cram the accidental for the B in, so we have to move over one more to the left. And there's our accidentals for that structure. Let's come over here, going back to flats, I think. Let's get a B flat on the top and the bass clef now. We seek an octave below. We don't have one. The next step is to seek a seventh. Well, we don't have that either. There's no C. There's a D. It's close, but that's a sixth. Okay? We seek something greater than an octave. Do we have a ninth? Do we have a tenth? Do we have an eleventh? And so on. The only candidate, really, is the G down here, which is a tenth. So we'll align those two, giving it the accidental. Go back to the top. Topmost note is the F in this case. Get to flat. That's supposed to be offset to the left. It's a little difficult to tell, I apologize. The only way we can place the D is to offset that one as well. I guess I can clean that up for you. Something like that. Okay, let's move over here. Uh, grabbing the A, let's go back to sharps. After that, we've got a bit of a problem maybe. Both of these notes are at least a seventh or greater. Hmm. So we want to seek for the octave first. We don't have that. We don't have the A. So the next note interval we seek is a seventh. We do have that one. We have a ninth, but we seek the seventh because it comes after the octave in priority order. So we give it the accidental, and the only other possibility, uh, the only other note we have left is, <coughs> is the G. So it gets a G sharp. Offset to the left. Okay, let's move over here and go with sharps again. I start with the A sharp. You always start with the topmost note. Might as well cross the board. Okay, and then we seek an octave. In this case, we do have an octave. So we have to align those two notes. Go back to the topmost note after that. We get the C, offset to the left. Have no choice on the B, offset to the left. Over here, in this congregation, this messy one at the bottom. Uh, we have the A sharp here. We do have an octave. 
So we have to apply the accidental to the octave. These should sit in direct alignment, and my drawing's a little bit messy, I apologize. After that, the topmost note is the B. It gets the accidental next. G can't go underneath it because it's a sixth or less. It offsets to the left. This should be correct here. Next structure over here, I kept shifting this uh, tone cluster uh, down just to kind of prove that some of these are going to look a little different here and there. Uh, we want to seek an octave. We have an octave, so we align those two. Highest note here is the G, so it offsets to the left. Next note, the only one we have left is the F. So this structure looks a little different than this one, but this is, this is correct. Last one, the A sharp here. We don't have an octave. We want to align the octave if we have it. We had it in the other three, but we don't have it here. So after that, we want to seek a seventh. And we don't have that either. We only have something larger. So, since we only have things larger below the topmost note, we seek the next note nearest the octave. In this case, it's going to be the G. It's going to be a ninth. So we align those two. Start all over again with the same procedure. Next highest most note is this F sharp way down here. It gets offset to the left. Last note left, the E, it's offset to the left. Kind of resembles this one. If we continue to take this down, we're going to continue uh, with a similar pattern. So hopefully this clarifies things for you. If you bought the book, or you're looking at my book, I have many, many examples and walkthroughs step by step of how these line up and why they line up that way. Um, which can really be helpful uh, in learning this procedure because most people, like I said, are just really unaware of this. Um, they know where to put the accidentals, they go to the left of a particular note, but there's a priority order, there's an organization, a method as to how to apply these so it simplifies things for a reader. Uh, she or he can expect to see them in a certain uh, manner and when one sees them this way, they can uh, recognize them to not be odd or strange looking or peculiar uh, so that they can play them or perform them uh, more accurately. Okay, the final two examples, um, let's call this number one, this one number two, are very dense structures. You will probably never need to write accidentals across something so huge, but in case you do, the principles that are written in that comprehensive set of rules, please pull those over and reference them as we're doing this, um, will help help you to understand how to do this in case you had actually had to do something like this. Um, each of this, number one, they're all the same, same exact series, they're all the same notes. I'm just applying them one accidental at a time, and I'm going to walk you through how I did this, why I did it, and why it's in this order, um, so that you can kind of see the procedure a lot better. And then number two, in the same way. Um, I could have walked through this throughout the video, but I think it would have taken even more time. Um, and this should allow you to, uh, if, you, if you do this along with the referenced notes, uh, you should be able to do this on your own uh, pretty successfully. So again, we always start at the top, topmost note in any one of these larger structures, or even in a smaller structure. Always start at the top with your accidental. I did sharps in the top example, second example will include all flats, obviously. Uh, they're both in treble clef. So we start with this B sharp up on top, and the next thing to do according to our rules is to seek out an octave an octave beneath the top note. Well, directly, we don't have one octave beneath the top note. We do have the next most preferential uh, possibility, though. We have a seventh. So we have to put the accidental onto the seventh. That's why this C should, contains a sharp right here. Uh, obviously, they're happening here, and I add one new sharp in. New sharp, new sharp, and so forth. So after the C's been, the sharp's been applied to the C, we again seek the same rules. We have notes that are at least a seventh beneath that note. So we want to continue in series. Uh, if the structure went down excessively, we would keep going with it, but um, in this case, we do have at least a seventh below the C. In fact, we have an octave. That's our most preferred pitch. So we're going to add, in direct alignment, the sharp here applied to that C. So now we have a B sharp, C sharp, C sharp. Nothing beneath there is greater than a sixth. We have a sixth, but nothing is greater than a sixth, so we're not going to continue. We're going to go back to the topmost note. Topmost note in our structure that doesn't have an accidental is the D. It gets its sharp next, offset to the left of our previous alignment, our aligned series. So the D sharp. After that, what we want to do is seek an octave. 
Do we have an octave beneath the seventh? No. But we have the next best thing. We have a seventh. That's an E. So we can align those two. We get the E sharp right there. So we apply it. Then what we want to seek from here down is another octave. Actually, we have one. We have an E sharp. That's why in this uh, diagram, I added the sharp directly beneath, because it's an octave below the E. There's clearly nothing else beneath that structure. So we move over to the left, grab the topmost note, the only remaining note, the F, and apply its sharp here. In other words, we start at the top and apply the next accidental. Next accidental. Next one. Next one. Next one. Final one. So I'm just walking you through the step-by-step -step process of how to apply those rules to place the accidentals properly onto very large structures. Again, when will you play something like this? Probably never. Probably most of you would hope that you never would. But if you actually had to write this out, this is how you'd do it. Furthermore, if you see structures this large for some reason or another, maybe on a you know, keyboard or, or something, um, most of them will not have accidentals applied to them. Some will maybe, some will not. But this, this is the, the densest it can get for you, really. And this is the procedure. Let's take a look at the bottom one, the next one. Uh, again, in my book, there are many other examples like these that walk you through step by step, just like this, with written commentary telling you why I selected uh, the next accidental in line. So if you have my textbook, uh, you have the benefit of being able to read that and reference those. Plus, there are many other ones added in. Um, I don't know how many. There could easily be a hundred of them that have the numbers written on as to the order of the, the priority, and you can kind of reference them all in that chapter. It's, it's pretty simplified if you see it. Okay, number two. We start with the B flat on top because we always start with the topmost note. After that, we seek an octave. We have one. So we have a B flat in here. We apply the flat in direct alignment. From there, we seek another octave beneath. We don't have one. So after an octave, because we have no B flat beneath this B flat, we seek a seventh. But we don't have that either. We don't have a C. So after that, what we want to seek is something greater than an octave. And you seek the next nearest note because we have both a tenth and an eleventh, the G and the F respectively, beneath the B flat. The tenth is the next nearest one to an octave, so the G actually gets the flat. Not the F, but the G. That's what this should be applied to. It's a little messy, I apologize. Um, after applying the G flat here, we start, we have nothing else beneath it that's at least a seventh or greater. We go back to the topmost note. In this case, it's an E flat. It gets its flat offset to the left. The next one beneath there, we're going to seek an octave. We don't have an octave beneath the E flat, but we do have a seventh, which is the next best pitch. So the F gets the flat in direct alignment. We want to seek below that for anything, we start with an octave. We do have an octave beneath the F, so we have to align that one. Here's where I placed it. So the F gets the flat. All three of those are in direct alignment. Clearly there's nothing beneath that, so we go back to the topmost note. The last note left is the A. It gets its flat offset to the left, and this is the priority structure for this. If you didn't know this procedure, could you imagine what you might have written if you had to put accidentals on all of these. And I know I see it very regularly. A lot of different possibilities. This is the correct one. This is the correct one. All the others are not very accurate. And they can make quite a mess. Having them in direct alignment, uh, especially octaves, make this much easier to be able to read. Uh, just like reading, say, octaves in the left hand on a, on a piano line, it's very common for pianists to see octaves, and I don't think they're reading both the notes so much as they see that configuration and just know what it is, especially when the notes go really low or really high. It's a very similar situation here. This just really simplifies our observation, our comprehension, our reading level involving music. So these principles are very important for us uh, to, to learn.